Jay Berg on from Pfizer, and I think first and foremost, I had not planned to show slides today. I cannot get into our company VPN, so I cannot do the demo. Um, it was running fine from the hotel this morning, so if we all want to go back to uh, the lobby, I'm more than happy to show you the demo, but maybe I can save some time. How's that? Oh, okay. Now I get it. All right. So basically, I'm going to focus on our enablement of the genome-wide association studies. And we've been working in Transmart for about a year or so. And this is something that we added with recombinant last year. And it's something that was really important, specifically for our therapeutics uh, customers. Uh, they had a number of uh, genome-wide association studies that they wanted internalized. Some of these were public. Some of them were proprietary based on samples in a biobank. And uh, essentially, I'll let me skip that slide. And I'll go right to what we, what we developed. So basically, we utilized the faceted search that was developed by J&J &J as, um, as a way of, of implementing this. So what you're seeing here is, an, is uh, a new tab within Transmart specific for genome-wide association studies. If you look on the main screen, what you, when, when you open this tab up, what you see is a listing of all the genome-wide association studies that we have. If you click on those studies, you get a listing of the individual analyses. And that's essentially what you're seeing here. So the 95 lipid loci uh, GWAS set, which is a public set. Uh, there are a number of analyses. I've opened up one, and as soon as you see that, as soon as you open it, what you get immediately back is a list of the top 500 significant SNPs. And you get that for, for uh, any analysis that, that you just opened. But what you, what you ultimately want to do is be able to uh, go through uh, these these studies and the faceted search tool, which will be I think demoed next, is is a way of doing that. So on the left hand side, although it's it's a little bit cut off, but there's analysis, study, region of interest, and data type. In addition to standard case control GWAS sets, we also have EQTLs and metabolomic uh, QTLs. And basically, you can you can filter on all of those criteria. So you can pick a study of interest, like the 95 lipid loci. You can pick one or more analyses of interest or one or more studies of interest, and also the region of interest, uh, which I'll show you quickly. So in this case, you can put in uh, the name of a, a specific gene or a specific SNP plus the flanking region around that gene or SNP uh, that you think would be pertinent. Uh, you can choose the human genome build. And uh, when you select that, it will become part of the filter. And it will give you a very similar uh, type of output. This allows you to look at multiple analyses on the same tabular output. In this case, we're seeing 95 with the loci, but with multiple analyses built, uh, built in. You can, of course, export this out to CSV. And so it's a very easy way of going through and filtering your GWAS sets based on uh, you know, the key criteria. You can also, of course, sort based on significance on your p-value and other uh, in any of the other uh, fields that, that are available. And uh, very easy to get that out. But that's, of course, a very rudimentary way of dealing with GWAS sets. Ultimately, what you want to do is you want to see this on a Manhattan plot. And uh, before I show you the Manhattan plot functionality, there is a data upload specifically for GWAS sets. So if you can form to uh, an upload spreadsheet, users can load their own sets on their, load their, sets on their own. And what we did to make this really reasonably valuable is Locus Zoom was something that, that people were using, and they asked for an interactive version of Locus Zoom. So what this is is exactly that. It's a bit client application, so it's Java-based. It essentially is launched through uh, Java Web Start, uh, through a Java Web Start application. And what you're seeing here is essentially multiple analyses on the, the same chart, you can mouse over any of the SNPs and get information on the SNPs. You're seeing the recombination rate. Uh, you can zoom in. You can zoom out on the uh, on the chart, and essentially kind of do any uh, any of the tricks that you'd expect to be able to do interactively with a chart of this nature. So essentially, you can see your Manhattan plots in a very easy, very um, very facilitated way. And again, being able to have any number of analyses provided, you're using the same region of the chromosome. You can see all those analyses together. 
Uh, additionally, there is a search interface that's included with the Manhattan plotter such that you can do everything you can do in the Transmart, but a little bit easier. So you can select your analyses on the on, uh, left-hand side, select which ones you'd like to include, and you give it a list of genes or a list of RS IDs, and essentially it'll go through and pull the data back. On the right-hand side, uh, it will present all the analyses that, that are available. You just click on any one or multiples of those, and you get the, get the Manhattan plot. If you have analyses that are not within the same chromosomal region, you can get a trouble spot. And basically, so you can look across uh, um, you know, those uh, non-conforming regions. Uh, the, it's normalized on the negative log P on the y-axis. And essentially, you can see where you have SNPs. You click on any of those trellis charts, uh, and the corresponding chart will show up in the Of course, you can get tabular views of all the data. You can get that data together. You can very easily go and select specific records that you like in that data and export export everything or export specific records. A uh, very easy way of taking the most significant SNPs across any of the analysis that you're interested in and getting that data out. And that is basically it. So that's what we've done. Uh, it is in a version um, that's in GitHub. It's not yet integrated in. It's something that we're, we're, we've been talking about trying to do for 1.1, 1 .1, although I can't guarantee that we'll be able to, uh, to get it in prior to, to, the, to the release. And uh, we did this with Recombinant, did, did the coding work for us last year, and actually did a really nice job with it. And essentially, there were a bunch of people that were involved in, in trying to make this work. And we currently, as I said yesterday, we currently have about 300 gig or so in, about just shy of 200 individual analyses. And we're adding in another two or 300 uh, specific case control GWASFs. And um, that, that's basically it. The metabolomic, we have 300 individual metabolites, uh, metabolite GWAS that we've loaded in. And those would normally correspond to a substantial amount of data, but uh, the loader allows you to filter on specific p-values in order to restrict the amount of data that you load in. So in that case, we, you know, we essentially filtered on everything 10 to the minus 1 and, uh, and below, and we're able to get I think it, it, it's about 10 gig or so of, of the metabolite set that we've loaded in. So I guess that's it. So the reason why you developed the development for yourself while the RP was doing the work? Yeah, so, yeah, there's a little story to this. The, the, first, the first part of this, that, so the, the reason why was uh, there were a number of requirements that Locusin couldn't, couldn't um, meet. And mainly, it was around. It'd be really great if we could see num you know, a number of analyses presented on the same chart and and see that differential. So there was there was a driver there. There was also a driver to be able to, I think, very easily select out the the studies that were of interest and do that very usably, which is something that the in fact most people just use Guava. In the name of the tool is Guava. I'm forgetting what the acronym is, but basically. It's most people just use use that tool now, so they just pull it up. Uh, they don't actually use the Transmart interface unless they want, you know, unless they want to get at MQTLs or EQTLs. So it's currently, there's only case control GWAS that are that are supported. And I think partly what we we're trying to do is we were transitioning from a legacy tool, and by having one of the things that having that interactive Manhattan plotter did for us is allow us to, to transition in a seamless way. So they weren't going from the legacy application to a Transmart. They, we set it up, pointed it to the legacy application, and when we were ready to move to Transmart, we just flipped the switch. And all of a sudden, we were on Transmart, but, but everything looked the same. So the way they accessed the data, and that was a, a real driver just in terms of, of seamless integration and, and trans, you know, transforming the application. Uh, the, the other thing that we, we thought about doing was using Spotfire. In principle, you should be able to use Spotfire to do this. My boss was, was you know, it's one of the things that you almost get fired for type of thing, but we, one of the reasons why we didn't, and one of the reasons why, why I was able to convince him not to go with Spotfire um, was because we said, well, Spotfire, not everyone's going to be able to afford it. 
and you know, six months later, they gave it away for free to Transmart users. A big piece of this was uh, Peter Henstock, who built the the tool, uh, who's one of our statistical programmers, loves loves to do visual programming. And the only way I could get him to do this, because he basically came to us and said, "I'm I want to do this," but the only way he would do this is essentially with his media, which was Java. So by and large, if that hadn't been the case, we probably would have done it in software. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what we did is we built the web service, and I should say we were competent, built the web service. Uh, we had uh, we have a web service platform internally uh, that we use for the legacy database, and basically we tried to set them up as as to match as closely as possible, and then we just did the switch. And, and actually, in Guava, uh, there is a just a little field that says use our internal system versus use use Transmart and so it was a very very seamless switch. Okay, Good. Um, Great. One more question. No, it, we only store the results. So everything was done in Plank externally. In fact, it's probably the way we have implemented our Transmart instance instances. We the advanced workflows are, are working very poorly, are performing very poorly on our hands. And it could be a number of, of reasons why. I'm not, I don't want to knock Transmart. It's just probably the way that we have it configured. But by and large, we don't see Transmart as being an analytical tool set. We see it as being a repository. That's the way that we're currently using it by and large. And so everything, so the only thing that we're storing here is summary statistics. It's the only thing that's being loaded. Great, thanks very much. Thank you, Jay.